there's so many aspects to the score we can talk about. I think the Adingra factor is a really interesting one. Matoma ultimately had quite a quiet game. I think he was up against Masrawi, the new Man United signing, who was 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 very good, I thought. I thought, you know, apparently he was very good in the Fulham game as well, in their opening game of the season last week. But he was really good against Karu Matoma uh, in this game as well. Matoma on the left-hand side obviously did really well for that first goal, getting the ball into the box and... And Danny Welbeck was able to score from that. A fantastic ball back in from him. But he did struggle. I don't think we saw the classic Karu Matoma who was able to take men on really easily and weave in and out of players so effortlessly. We saw a player who was able to, who was having to, you know, receive the ball, then pass it back to the midfielder he got it from. Play a bit in that kind of Manchester City style of players that we see from Jack Grealish, etc. You know, taking the ball on the left-hand side and then popping it back into the midfield. We weren't seeing that energetic dynamism that we usually see from from Kari Matoma where he's creating chances, weaving in and out. And I think the fact that we brought on uh, Simona Dingra in the last 10 minutes or so, I was waiting for that substitution to happen either on the left or right-hand side because I think the way that Simona Dingra was able to then provide that freshness and ultimately get the ball into the box with the Jao Pedro goal. Who, who knows? Maybe Karu Matoma would have also made that chance as well. But I think um, it was nice to see that change because because Matoma struggled. He was obviously so, so brilliant against Everton on the opening day. But maybe it was just to do with the way that United were playing or the players they had specifically. He did struggle a little bit more. Of course, he still had a very good game. And I think he was part of a lot of Brighton attacks but we didn't find that all of our attacks were necessarily going through him every single time. And I think the challenge, I think, for Matoma going forward is to produce that consistency. Now, we did see real consistency with him last season before he got injured, but the consistency every single game. But also, I want to see a little bit more end product from uh, Karu Matoma. And I know that might sound a little bit harsh, but I think often he'll get the ball and he'll be so good at getting us up the field or tiring out defenders by weaving in and out, dribbling past them. However, you, you rarely see him receive the ball, dribble in and out, and then provide an assist from that moment or score a goal from that dribble that he's just done. Um, I'd love to see that be a little bit more output where he can get 10 goals, 10 assists by the end of the season. That would be a really good marker for him. I think that's definitely something he can work to this season. We saw it in the Everton game, how brilliant he was. And yeah, he was part of getting, he got an assist for that goal today, for Danny Welbeck's first goal um, for Brighton. So a really good performance from him, but I think one where I want to see a bit more consistency from him. Elsewhere, we were able to see Julio and Cesar come onto the pitch. I thought that was really nice to see him back, obviously getting an injury after being in the Olympics. Jorginho Rutter, a 40 million record signing from Leeds United, came on, played on the right-hand side and did pretty well. He was taking players on. He was using his left foot on that right-hand side to cut in and create some chances. And the team just looked really dynamic. Ultimately, we were we were trying to win that game in that last five, ten minutes or so. And, and, and we were good value for it. Generally, I don't know what you what you think, but I think Herzl is probably thinking, you know, this Premier League lark's pretty easy so far. Two games, two wins, top of the league, and a game against Everton, which in the end was pretty simple. And a game against United, which we which we performed really well in stages. I think he's been blessed to receive a squad that's been inherited really nicely for him. He's in a really strong position. Some top, top players who are accustomed to a specific style of play, which is really suited to his one. All the tools are there for Fabian Herzler to succeed. But I'm, what I'm liking from what I'm seeing is that ability that Brian is showing to be more resilient, to be more pragmatic, to get through tough spells of the games. It's not all about pretty possession for possession's sake. It's about building up through the midfield a bit more, being more direct and getting out to our wingers and getting them to take on players and get balls into the box. We're seeing a different style of that attacking possession-based football, which we're used to. And I really welcome that. I think that's a really real positive for Brighton. Um, We've got many games coming up in the next few weeks which are going to test us. And on paper, this start to the season probably wasn't the easiest. However, you know, we've done really well against a difficult Everton side and obviously Man United at home going into Arsenal in the next game. You've got to say with the depth that we have, with the players that we're bringing in, 
we, 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 you know, we, we can make it three out of three. And with players like Enciso coming back, with Rutter being available, with a Dingra having such an electric impact off the bench, our squad's in such a healthy place. It's all very well having the players, but having players who are in form and able to come onto a pitch and actually make a difference. We saw it last week with a Dingra where he came on and was needed at half time, was able to score a goal, get an assist, and do really well. Um, so I, I'm, I'm impressed with the performance all round because we had to show different sides to us. We had to get through that press of the first half. We had to, we had to um, show our knack from set pieces. We had to come out and then show a different style to us in the second half and play the more, you know, kind of conventional Brighton way that we're used to. We had to get our luck a little bit. And of course, all of this might run out and we'll get tricky patches, but I think our squad is built to survive it a bit better than it has in the past. And I think the manager's style of play probably does suit the Premier League a little bit more to maybe Deservey's where, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to learn Hertzler's style a little bit because I think often we do kind of not play around in that midfield so much. But I, 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 think, it, I think that pragmatism and that directness does suit the Premier League despite the fact we're a possession-based team. I think it's, it's quite complicated and interesting, but it's, um, it's going well for us so far. So looking forward... Obviously, we've got Crawley at home in the in the Carabao Cup um, at the Amex. I think, is it the second or first round of the Carabao Cup? It's a regional round, so you're only playing teams who are kind of in the southern the southern half of the draw uh, alongside us. So we've been given Crawley, which will be a fantastic game. I, I hope we're going to see the Amex kind of pretty full for that because, you know, there's going to be a lot of fans who will be interested in that. Fairly cheap tickets. I know it's on a school night and a week night, but I think it's one of those where you're going to be able to see second string players, players like Ayari playing, Rotter hopefully playing, Gruder playing as well. Hopefully Carl Rushworth will get some minutes in goal and we'll see that change come a little bit. And I'm excited to see how we line up for that game and kind of the result we get. You'd think it's a game that we'll be able to kind of breeze through and maybe get a result, but you just never know, do you? Um, so yeah, a brilliant result. Building on our, our record against Man United where we always seem to kind of somehow get wins against them and particularly at home you know obviously we didn't get it in the last game at home but our last few the last few years our home match against Man United have always pulled up absolutely unbelievable results and this is just another one those full-time scenes at the Alex were so so good loved it and um you know hopefully we can build on it with a brilliant away day in London at Arsenal next week one where we we got to go into it and 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 feel confident because because we're looking good we're looking really good at the moment so yeah Thank you so much for watching and in the meantime if you've enjoyed this video if you enjoyed the result please drop a comment give it a like please subscribe to the channel we upload upload every week after matches and also midweek talking on topics such as kind of new signings or more feature based games I think I, I'm you know there's so much more to this channel than just kind of weekly uh, analysis after matches so I, I really want you to be involved in that and get involved as much as you can so as always thank you so much for watching Hope you enjoy the Crawley game if you're going. Enjoy the Arsenal game if you're going to that as well. And uh, as always, in the meantime, up the Albion.